All right, so today we're going to talk about localization. And this is how, uh, this is a very simple thing inside of uh, IntelliJ. It does a lot of the work for us. But we have to uh, basically provide different strings in different languages. And the Android operating system detects, based on the locale settings of the device, what language to display. And if your uh, app is written like we have here, ours is only in English. And if their locale is set to Spanish, so their device normally says everything is going to be printing in Spanish, all the menus are in Spanish, and they come to our application, it looks for a Spanish set of strings. And if it can't find it, it goes back to the default. The only thing we have is this value here. This is our English version. That's our default. If we don't have any locale set, that's what gets displayed. So it doesn't matter what their locale says, the only thing we have available is English. Okay, so this is the default. Without any location string on it, uh, location identifier on this values, it uh, displays it if we wrote this in our native tongue of Spanish and we and our locale said English, it would still display in Spanish. That's the default for the application. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter what you do, that's our default. So everything falls back to that. So in order to set another language, we need to duplicate a few things, but let's start with the strings to, to start with. So we need to have another values folder in here so we're going to create a new folder, right-click on our res, a new resource directory, and it's going to be values. And IntelliJ already knows some different things about these particular uh, resource folders. And we want to have in it a, uh, a language code. So we add that into it. and it says, okay, now what do you want the two-letter code to be? So a language, you have to know the two-letter country code of that particular language. And it's typically the same as the domain, top-level domain for their country code. So uh, not always, but uh, for France, for instance, their top-level domain is FR. Their language code is FR. So you have to know the, the language code, and you can search for those online. They're easy to find. We want España. We want Spanish. And so we type ES, and that creates a directory called values-es. So it puts the country code at the end of this. So all that's doing is it's a little nice little dialog that helps you type ES at the end of your <laughs> values. That's all it does. But it's, it's nice because it forces you to think about that. So now we need to have that, if their locale is set to ES, Spanish, then it's going to look in here for any strings. If it still can't find them, it's going to default back to our English version. So we, we need to copy the current strings that we have. So let's just copy that and paste it over here. And so now we have two string values, and they're identical in this case. For now, yeah, you had a question. Doug. Uh, yeah, the, well, this is the default. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is this is now. Uh, let's see. This one is the Spanish version. So all we have to do is change what is seen by the user. The internal string names that we've resourced in our files, that we've referenced in our files, don't have to change. That's our programming internals, and nobody can see that anyway. So uh, we need to go change this health application to Spanish. So in your, uh, in your assignment, you, I said you should go use Google Translate. It's pretty good. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have English. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have uh, Spanish. And so the Spanish for health application is Aplicación de la Salud, 
All right, that's pretty good. So all we have to do is take this and copy it and put it back into our code here. And our wait file name, that also doesn't need to change. I don't think that's important. But let's go change some, let's go add some strings now from just our main, uh, main activity that we have here. All right. The, uh, CSV file, if you deleted it from that one, it would default back to the top Yes, it's going to keep going all the way down. If it can't find the string here, it's going to go back up to the top level. Yes. So in cases like a file, it would be better to just... Probably it leave it out completely. Yes, I agree. So let's take some of these uh, weight things. So we want to we want to localize this string. And so if I click inside the string here, the little light bulb comes up. And the first thing we need to do is to extract it as a resource. All right. So now it knows that I have two folders. And so I want to automatically create this resource name in both of my folders. So it doesn't matter if I start later or, or earlier. Uh, IntelliJ will keep track of that. So this is uh, seriously underweight. Let's say OK. And so it extracts it as a resource, puts it inside of both my Spanish version and my English version, which is just exactly what I wanted. And we'll go translate those later. Let's, let's get all of these. So I'm going to change this one to uh, extract a resource, put it in both of them, and we'll call this underweight. And normal, extract that as a resource. I don't know why it doesn't remember this. Uh, uh, normal, weight, and overweight. We want to put it in both, both strings. Gravely overweight. Come on. All right, so now we've extracted them all. They're all in our different uh, files. And we want to change the Spanish version of this. So we can copy this string, go to Google Translate. Translated, en serio bajo, bajo peso. Now, if if you were going to do a serious app uh, that that for a company, I would highly recommend that you get somebody else to translate than Google Translate. You can start it this way, but the problem is that this is not infallible, and it could translate it poorly. That would be a bad thing. It could be offensive badly in another language, right? So they have localization services out there that do this for you. And uh, I've had to do that in the past. Uh, we hire somebody that's a, a native language speaker, and we send them basically a file of words like this. We could send them just this file and tell them uh, translate this into whatever language it was supposed to be. Yeah, they might, but. <laughs> yeah, Spanish is a little safer. Yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah, those I would be, you know, all over. Ah. So bajo bajo peso. So here's, here's a case where it came up with different uh, words down here. So normal is the same as normal, but it also says 
uh, it gives you ideas down here, like uh, maybe it should be regular instead. Uh, you can you can choose that. I'm going to choose regular. All right, so we'll put that over here. Regular. Uh, so that's good enough. Let's uh, let's run this now and see if we can get this to execute. Yep. So what's nice is once this comes up, this is all this is all still I'm gravely overweight. Did I have that one? Gravely. So I need I need to have a seriously underweight, right? So <laughs> seriously underweight. That means they're very tall and very uh, all right so seriously underweight so to change this we can change the locale of our little virtual device here and they have an app built in directly for that rather than going through all the settings you have to go through like four level or five levels to set this they've got oh, seriously they have a locale uh, Seriously, launcher has stopped. Give me a break. I can't do anything. Help. This works great on my Mac, by the way. So I can run this uh, custom locale. Oh my God, you got to be kidding me. Custom locale. Oh my gosh. It doesn't like it, seriously. Uh, all right, finally got this thing to work. Had to restart my AVD. So I can choose ES, I want Spanish, and select ES. And now my Android device should be in Spanish. So I can go to, go to home, go back to my apps. Run my application de la salud. See that? Aceptar. So now everything's in Spanish. Well, except the application launcher has died. All right, so there we go. So now we need to be underweight, right? So they're really tall and they weigh 10 pounds. In serio bajo peso. So it works. Isn't that great? Pretty simple once you get everything to work right. Um, and I would obviously have to translate every word on my screen, every word that is displayed, as well as any icons that I had. So now let's talk about the icons real fast. The uh, the icons are stored in these drawable folders, right? So if I, if I had a, uh, a an, I need a Spanish version of my icons. So to do that, I would copy this entire folder and paste it. And instead, we're going to call it, we have to put the country code 
before the resolution code. So it's drawable dash ES dash XXHDPI. And then inside of these, these pictures, I would have to modify these pictures. Instead of saying alarm, I'd have to translate that. Alarma. And then I would take that and put it in my little icon builder that I had and build a new Alarma icon and put the, the uh, new images in the a Spanish version. And you'd have to do that for every resolution that you want to support. But uh, some things I've seen online is that what you can do for those others, because you start to have a huge package because you've got uh, 20 different languages in uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, five different resolutions. It starts to be a lot of little icons that you have. So some of the people just create the biggest resolution one and let the Android operating system scale that downwards as necessary. And that's easier. Obviously, if it's a really important icon, you'd want to display that in every version. But not always necessary. Yes, that would be even better. Some some universal word like, uh, like yeah, something like that. Right, right. A, a drop of blood, you know, like uh, Doug has a drop of blood for his and things like that. All right, so that's really all there is to localization. Very simple. Uh, you just have to have multiple uh, values. If you had another language in here with French, you would do that. Uh, you also have different values that could be uh, region codes as well. So what, what happens with those are, let's say you have a, let's rename this just to show you what it would look like. You might have a values dash English, but the English Canadian version of that. So this is the region code for this language. So you might have subsets of that uh, regions. All right. And you might have a, a French and a French Canadian, uh, sorry, F Canadian version of that. So, but if those aren't specified, then uh, it's going to fall back to French anyway. So that depends on how specific you want the languages. I know that in Canada, I've built sites for Canadian companies, and they require that the site be in both French and English. It's a, it's a national law that all the sites have to be in both, and you have to be able to switch back and forth. So, All right, any questions on localization? Pretty simple stuff. How many hours does that take to 